The XY Advisor podcast is intended for professional financial advisors. This content is created in partnership with our sponsor, Net Wealth Investments Limited, ABN 85090 569 109, AFSL 230 975, and is limited to publicly available information. Before acting on any general advice, you should consider whether appropriate and obtain financial advice from a qualified financial advisor. XY Advisor does not hold an AFS license and does not provide any financial advice or services or endorse any general advice. If a PDS or IM exists, you should obtain a copy and review it thoroughly before making a decision. Advice Tech. As if it wasn't enough to be across TMDs, Alpha, Beta, Rule of 72 and all the other nuances of financial advice. Now, advisors are expected to be across all the technology options too. And there's so many of them. But never fear, Peter D is here. Join me each week on a journey of discovery through the software and apps on offer for advisors and advice businesses. So let's dive in, fellow advice explorers. This podcast is proudly sponsored by NetWealth. Imagine a world where you can offer clients access to local and international investments. A world where you can engage with clients meaningfully, backed by powerful data and insights with mobile-friendly technology. A world where you can build business efficiencies through scaled managed accounts and bulk reporting. And a world where you can get all the latest news, research and insights to spot the changes that really matter. Wealth is more than just money. It's about opportunity and progress. A world of opportunity awaits you at netwealth.com.au forward slash woo. Hello and welcome to the XY Advice Tech Podcast. I'm Peter Diamantidis and the guest joining me here today to deep dive into the Dash suite of tools was actually a BDM back when coin software was a thing. You might be too young to remember that, but I do. Is a DJ in his spare time and recently joined us on stage at the XY <laughs> Advisor All Licensee PD Day. Thank you so much for joining me on the show. Andrew Willan. Woo! Hey! <laughs> Thanks, Peter. You're welcome. You've done some research there. Oh, You've dug up some some embarrassing personal exactly. information there. It's impressive. Well, we've, you know, yeah. we've got to make you human. You know, you're the leader of this massive yeah. tech beast. We've got to make you human. <laughs> to, to my point, actually, just to bring a bit more humanity, mm. we love to get to know people through mm. their technology use. What's your most used emoji? Do you even use emojis? Uh, I don't. I don't. I am not a huge okay. user, but I when it, I do have one that I love whenever I use it, which is like that Italian gesticulation, yeah. you know, like where you've got the fingers <laughs> up, like and someone gives you some good news and you just awesome, <laughs> you know. So that that I love as an emoji, but the rest are, yeah, the rest get a hard yeah. pass. Fair enough, me. fair enough. <laughs> yeah. So then your smartphone, we all live on them. Can't live without them. Mm. If you had to delete everything off the smartphone and just keep three, what apps would you keep? Yeah. Um, I'm just looking at my phone now. So, obviously, we've got a boringly, sorry, they're pings <laughs> away just on cue there. Um, it, I, I boringly, I've got to have the, the, you know, the email calendar, all yeah. that sort of stuff. But the ones that I, so that's one, but the one that I, I cannot live without I, and quite good for that we're on a podcast now is I'm a massive podcaster. Oh. So, my brain doesn't switch off. And so I actually go to sleep listening to yep. podcasts. And the more inane, the better. the better. Because if it's, you know, someone's got a real story to tell, it actually yep. does the opposite. But if it's a boring sort of comedy, like, and no, yeah, boring but inane com- yep. comedic podcast, then my brain can nice. rest and then I go to sleep. It's so like that, that TV show totally. you love that you can go to sleep to that just catches enough of your brain that it turns off. It's like, it, yeah, yeah that's I'm it. the same. That's it. That's, so that's how that's how I live my life. So my, my wife is always yelling at me because I've got always got one new phone in headphone in one around the house and she has to repeat herself <laughs> constantly. So so that's that's probably the big one. Fair for me. enough. I love it. Well, in podcasts, I mean the variety is insane. Like you just any yeah. topic that you'd like to talk about or hear about. I mean, there's one I listen yeah. to that's a, a guy. Basically, it's a movie podcast, but it's through the lens of you've died and you get to know people through their movies, and that's how he interviews people. Like it's the strangest and most bizarre oh, thing, wow. but really interesting because it becomes quite yeah. emotional. Well, 
<laughs> See that one? I couldn't right, it's too interesting. To. I'm like that's yeah. too, that's that's a bit too intense for me. <laughs> All right, so we caught up at the X Y Advisor or Licensee DPD, mm. which is a mouthful, um, and mm-hmm. had a conversation that could have brought, probably gone on for weeks. And so before we dive into Dash, I guess I wanted to just chat about you know where do we feel we're at in advice and in, you know, our progress and oh. you know, how do you, how you, and I'm happy to give my view too, how do you feel about where mm. we're at versus where you'd like us to be at? You know, how do you? Do you know what? It's, it's a really, it's a good question. And um, I think we're at a really critical yeah. juncture. So, I mean, I've, I've done nothing but financial planning in my whole yeah. adult life. So for my sins in a previous <laughs> life, like I've, Got got a job at Count when I was yep. eighteen. You know, going to university and I was there for five years. Like I p- picking up phones, talking about superannuation, yep. uh, RBLs, and yeah. all that sort of stuff back Oof. in the day. And it, like well, I was there when FSR <laughs> hit and SOAs, what well, they were called financial yep. plans, right? Where at the time went from ten pages, just normal documents, to one hundred and thirty yep. overnight. And then we just haven't ever looked back. Mm. Like it's just sort of gotten worse and worse. And then the banks came in, and then that that did. You know, had had certainly an impact on innovation yeah. and tech, and then obviously just the industry in general, Royal Commission. So it kind of, when you look back, it really it got yeah, grim it there did. for a while. You know what I mean? It really like it did. really did get grim. And then the, the where it landed for me, really landed for me, was when, and I'm not going to get this stat right, but it's the AIA did that um, study into yeah. mental health of planners and like. I think, and this is probably on the low side, but from memory, it was something like a 40% of them are in regular contact yeah. with a therapist, right? And that just hit, really hit home yeah. to how this is the people, the people side of all of this regulation yeah. and the big banks and the, the, the reputational yeah. damage. Now, having said that, like now we're actually kind of in a, now that the FASIA is, this is what it feels to me as advisors play this back, FASIA and all this sort of stuff is going through the industry. Is becoming more professional. Yeah. It's more fluid from a tech perspective. Yeah. The banks are out, and everybody gets just the the good, you know, the wheat's being being separated from the chaff, and the, the industry is sorting mm. itself out. Um, and I think it's grown up a lot really yeah. quickly. And from my, from my, from where I am today, sitting on the the software tech side, it's the most exciting time that we've been part of because. Everyone is a decision yeah. maker. There's like 857 different businesses right. that can make their own choices and fashion fashion their own business rather than being part of a huge brand. It's certainly you know? there's that so, feel oh, of democratisation of access to tech yeah. that's never been there. I mean, it's it the never price. was like you'd you'd meet with somebody like, well, this, well, why is it like this? Well, that's because the player that buys fifty thousand licenses of this <laughs> decides how this. Like, yeah. it was just always, you know, yeah. big end of town driven, and I get that. So there's absolutely no judgment in that. I get why that was the case, but I think what it meant is to date, and along your lines of what we've all been responding to, it was reactive innovation in that it, we just reacted yeah. to what was right in front of us. You know, there was no. Right discovery to the innovation there was no wonder to the innovation and that's what no. i feel like we're just turned like i feel like we're getting over that hill where we can start to do mm. a bit of the weird and wacky you know a bit of the out there yeah. and that's when you discover something that a client's going to love they're like oh my goodness this is the best thing ever you know i don't feel like yeah. we've really yeah. had one of those from a client perspective for quite a while you know that magical no. thing no and that's right and, and I, I to be honest i'm i'm just picking up on something you said, that there's no judgment. I kind of, in this top, possibly unpopular opinion, but I kind of feel like there is a room for banks 100%. in, in, in the, the space because not everyone can afford advice. Yeah. And I always thought it was strange. You go to a Mercedes place, it's dealer, so there's, someone's going to sell you a Mercedes, right? If you go yeah. to a bank, someone's going to sell you yeah. bank products. But it doesn't mean all the advice is yeah. sketchy uh, and it's just affordable. So I think some advice is often better yeah. than none, but... Anyway, it, it played out how yeah. it played out. But to your point, from a tech perspective, the people who are making big decisions are taking risk-managed <laughs> yeah. decisions, you know what I mean, rather than a real swing yeah. for the fence because there was just no no and incentive to take a swing To be for the clear, fence. in terms of risk management, we, when we say that, I think a lot of the industry hears, oh, well, they were protecting 
either themselves or their advisors. And the risk management controls aren't necessarily more protective. Often, actually, they're less so because they're restrictive or they're too checkbox or they're too, yeah. you know, it's interesting. They have all these construct, yeah. but actually, <laughs> yeah. nope, you're not more compliant, you know, so. No, exactly. Yeah, and, and we, right. we saw that, you know, we, that's exactly how right. it played out. So, look, it, it's been a fascinating journey. It's been a fascinating journey and, and grim at times, but, uh, yeah, I, I think where it, where we sit yeah. now is actually a pretty good, a pretty good place, pretty exciting sort of place to be to be in and about and trying. And new that's things. probably a nice entree into Dash is because you there's only a handful of operators like you that are sort of going for this more marketplace approach. You know, something that say, hey, you can pick the combo of things that you think might suit you, which is certainly not how it was historically. Um, and there's only a few doing that mm. now. So I'd love to sort of understand for you guys the psychology behind that. Like what was the decision that went, this is the way we're going to approach this? Yeah. Well, there's a couple of things. So there's I'll, – I'll get into that. But the first thing mm-hmm. that people have got to understand about Dash is, yeah, the advice mm-hmm. marketplace. So we've – is that. And I'll talk about – that's the, the piece that facilitates all of the um, integrations yeah. that you're referring to. But our big swing for the fence – Right. And this is what we're saying now is the time is we have for the first time, or at least since advisor net gain for people who can remember <laughs> that, that was much loved, but restricted to bank yeah. products. <laughs> right. From the, from Bats and George, is that we have built a platform, mm-hmm. like, and when I say it's platforms, an overused mm. word, right? So I mean, like an investment super wrap yeah. platform that integrates into our financial planning right. software and, and which anyone can use. Um, and the reason for that is you think about how big platforms are and how much money mm. they make and how successful they are, and you don't ever deny or judge people for being no. successful, but in com- com- I always feel like they're very richly rewarded for staying in their yeah. lane, right? So like the advisors go from fact find to the financial event planning process is so long and involved, and then the execution and reporting, while critical, you've got to yeah. get it right. Right. So we're not, we, we run a platform, so we know how hard it is, but it feels like there's a real opportunity for, to, if you've got a platform to reach deeper into practices yeah. and get to know them and use some expertise. Yeah. And it's, it, there is, there is a challenge too, because, and we hit this wall all the time. And I imagine this is a lot of where you're coming from is you can, everything up to that point, you can be super efficient. You can be running a Formula One. Like you can just have a practice that is the slickest, the most exciting, the most fantastic, the most effective, and it hits product land <laughs> and suddenly you're yeah. driving your Formula Formula One car on pothole-ridden roads. Like it's just a disaster. Right. And so you can't run the thing at 200 kilometers an hour. It's running at 20 kilometers an hour because the minute it hits right. that implementation piece – it becomes because yeah. it's in somebody else's world. That's understandable, but I agree with you. There's a frustration to that. Yeah, and it just feels like one of those things that has mm. always been, but we never has it been yeah. challenged. Like I don't think there was an advisor in the room that said, "You know what? Let's keep financial planning production, advice production, separate from execution. Yeah. Never the two shall meet." Before. So when we've rolled this out, this idea out, this strategy out, the feedback is overwhelming. We've been fine, yeah, right? right? Because really, the platform should fall back to the to the background, yeah. and um, so anyway, so that's yep. Dash, right? Dash is the old Wealtho, well, the Wealtho two platform and raw software yeah. coming together, right? And integrating and blending the worlds of software advice yep. provision uh, and platform. Um, but to your point, the advice marketplace. So you build software these days. So when I was selling Coin, yeah. you mentioned that two thousand and three, you we were selling against X Plan and. Yes. Busy and, yeah, and anyway, there was a couple of others I've forgotten about, but you had to be the best at yep. everything, right? So every module, I've got it, and so you have to beat the competition at every single module, and then the result is yep. binary, right? So <laughs> like you either get the deal yep. or you don't, right? But if you think, so that's from a sales perspective, it's frustrating because you clearly you can't be the best no. at everything. At all, in all rooms, at all times, right? But from a, it also just from a user perspective, from an advisor perspective, it just means it's it's so scary because you're just (laughs) locked in for seven years and you can't. And if the next you sign that contract and the next day some kid 
re-revolutionizes the financial planning world with yeah. some app that's got APIs at the back from their bedroom, then you you can't no. access it, right? So, you know, we've taken this sort of the, the very much the Salesforce zero yep. style view of the world where we will manage the integration. Yep. Right. So we will rather than, you know, outsource this to the planners and who have to like put in, you know, people who are, are pseudo tech people in to manage all mm-hmm. their integrations. Like we can be the center piece, but you can build a custom nice. ecosystem. So we've got like 30, 30 apps in our advice yep. marketplace. Some of them we've built, like we, we will place bets on what we think we're uniquely yep. good at. <clears> um, <throat> and we've got modeling and the, we think the best digital advice SOAs. Uh, the goal-based modeling yeah. tool, you know, all sorts of stuff as CRM. But I don't want to build a commissions tool, yeah. for instance, and it's not a skill set. So we'll just plug in to yeah. three of them and you can decide, you know. And so I just think that's the way of the yeah. future. Um, but the benefit is you get access to that, but then you, you're outsourcing the, uh, the, the management of the integrations to a partner, which is us. The other nice um, thing about that when yeah. I think about it is because you're not doing the – whole, well, I'm knocking down my house and rebuilding this entire thing, (laughs) then you can renovate a room at a time effectively. So it means you can do this piecemeal, which to be frank, not only is that less frightening, it's also more manageable. I mean, very few people can shut down a practice for three to six months to get a massive transfer. And I I mean, if you're going to move everything, that's probably what you'd need to do. It's insane. Like it's really hard to do. Whereas if you can piecemeal it from whatever the, the most driving problem you have first, you know, right through mm. that, that's exciting too, um, you know, and more likely yeah. to leap. It is. And yeah, it is. So it, that helps. I think it's a win-win yeah. for everyone, a win for us because we can, you know, have, have more conversations. But instead of being a product yeah. flog, we, the BDMs love it here because they get to go out and ask the question and yeah. mean it. What's going on in your practice? Like where, where, where how yeah. can we help, you know? And then we can, if we can, if it's an asset of ours that we can plug in to make your life better, that's great. But if we just, if it's someone else's, that's equally good too. You know? And I think, so. and there's some other things you've folded in there that um, I think might go through, you know, sort of people might miss things like, I think you call it highlighter now. It used to be called something else where, you know, if there's something you use that's like an Excel calculator or a groovy thing that even maybe is internally yeah. used, it doesn't need to be necessarily just with the public, then you guys can turn that into sort of a really powerful online tool. You know, you can convert something that's just Excel. Mm. Like there's some real magic in that. You know, if there's a particular experience you've got with your clients and you use this one thing to demonstrate that, you know, whatever the calculation is, yeah. then just turn it into a little web tool. Like, wow. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, go, no code. Right. So we've actually got a global pat- patent on that. Um, and so, yeah, you could basically take us, if you've got a spreadsheet that a power planner in your business always uses or yeah. loves or whatever you, someone uses it, you can take all the risk out and we can turn it into yeah. an app, like a cloud based nice. app. Um, and turn it around in like four yep. to six weeks. So it's really, it's really, there's really clear. And we build a lot of our internal that applications way. on Highlighter as well because, um, it's just so fast yeah. um, and easy to use, but it's a really cool piece of kit that, yeah, we don't speak about a lot because pl- not, not a lot of planners are, are interested, but it is, uh, it's super cool. Yeah. Clever. And it's, it's one of those things that when I think about where, you know, the value sits or the, or the gold in most practices, it'll be something repetitively difficult. So that's a challenge. And that could be um, that they've always got to, you know, enter data a certain way or they do it incorrectly or somebody else does it for them. Whatever it might be to discover something like that tool. Yeah. Okay. There's some weaknesses with Excel. We can't quite get it to do what we need it to do or protect it the way we need to protect it. Turn it into an online tool and suddenly it takes away that challenge. Yeah. Um, you know, there's. And that key man risk as well. So yes. like this is the one nightmare is this, that we help a lot of people with. They've, someone's built a a spreadsheet and then someone's left and no one knows how to update yeah. it anymore. <laughs> so, like I will keep using it, but how do I update oh, the no, super exactly. rates of the center link? Exactly. So, yeah, it's a, it's a really and that's and that's ultimately sort of the dash. If we take a step back, this dash story yeah. that if we get if we you know as we sort of roll out, it's we only merged in uh, yep. April this year, so the the two businesses to create dash. Um, but we just have all this kit right. so that if you've got a problem, you can just, if we, if we get this right, we've got, an advisor's got a problem. Just, I'll just ring Dash first yep. because they have it, they have everything or they've got a partnership with 
you know, with someone with with um, you know with a partner that can fill the yeah. gap for us. So that that's ultimately the the world we're trying to create is this utility for tech. And I'm betting then from your team um, that go out and then talk to people. Mm that means they've probably got a more consultative approach because it's more about helping mm. the client discover, you know, or the advisor discover what they need and then, hey, this is what you could potentially do to solve it as opposed to here we have a widget, let us jam it into your practice. <laughs> yeah. Jam it. Yeah, it is. And I have, have, I've been on that, <laughs> that <laughs> yeah. side of the fence before where you're talking to someone and you just get this feeling that they're just waiting waiting for their yeah. moment to launch into the product yeah. spiel. No, so they're very they, – they, they got we have the opportunity and we take it all the time to be really consultative yeah. to the point, and we presented this at the mm. XY um, at the XY day, is that we've actually came up with a framework of how – like it's a little piece of mm. our IP, right? This, we call it an innovation implementation framework or the <laughs> IIF where we – have seen thousands, like I've seen thousands of practices implement yep. software. And to your point before, some of them will take three oh. months, six months, and then yeah. hate it, right? And and and, and big still not get what they want. Remorse, and, <laughs> big time. Big buyers remorse, and then never, but stay because they the yeah. nightmare. Not doing that again. That it was to implement it. Yeah, yeah, I'm not going to do it again, right? So they get stuck to something that they hated so much. Yeah. This, feeling of sunk cost. But anyway, what we've seen people do it, bad, you know, if we call that done badly and then we've got the other people who just seem to take it like mm. a duck to water and they just get the most out of it immediately. And so we've analysed what is the secret to that, you know, like what what is why, why is one struggling so badly and implement the same tech over here and they're yeah. just nailing it. So what what is the difference? And what we've come up with is really – interesting is that in software what we software in particular what we get asked for is can you do modeling on family right. trusts and SMXFs and like all yeah. the new all the complexity and i i kind of get it i kind of it feels more like are we really in financial right. planning or are we software like do we know it's, it's more of a do we really yeah. know what we're talking about um but it is the wrong thing. But then if we win that, if we if we get through that, we'll win the deal. But really what people should be asking is where, where rather than sort of the hard mm. stuff is, sorry, the, the, the complex stuff for new yeah. clients and perhaps you only do 20 of them right. in a year, what do you do it's 300 the maintenance. Off, right? And then it's yeah. the maintenance. And most advice businesses that have, you, you would know this, right? Like you're, you're in the review yeah. game. 100%. You know? You've got a mature you're in, you're in the review game and the I FDS consent. game yep. and all of that sort of stuff. So really, if you can knock off half an hour off something you do 400 yep. times a year, that is such a bigger win. And then you get the big complex family trust, even if you had to do that in Excel, even if we did yep. nothing else but we helped that, that would be the huge win yep. for the practice. Um, so I think when people like they hate what they've got currently, but they they approach a business like ours is that they they sort of get a little bit lost yes. in, the, in the demo and oh this is what but what were they should really be coming to us with or and we should be teasing this out as well our sales guys should be teasing this out is where are mm. your problems and how can we help and use the advice marketplace to put in the right. best product whether it's ours or someone else for that and don't leave that implementation until yeah. it's done right until you've achieved until your you goal can see the wins. and then move on yeah. to the next. Yeah, yeah, see the win. And I would, uh, I would argue for you... most advice practices, I really am generalizing here, but I think it's a fair generalization is if you just sort of ask us all, Hey, gee, what's the biggest frustration? Every one of the, the biggest frustrations will be an advisor frustration. The challenge is mm. <laughs> what they won't be listing is the support team frustrations, which will be 40 right. times as long. And generally, yeah. if you can knock those off, you've recovered half or even a full person. Like it's, the to me yeah. the support like and it trickles on to elsewhere. So if your support team member can get back a couple of hours a day, then they can do more for mm. the advisor. You know, like it it it's yeah. just it and, all trickles yeah. through. Whereas we have this focus, our pointing in focus of what we do, and it's to me there's far more volume of activity that goes repetitive volume of activity that goes on in the rest of the team, and that is where some yeah. great gold is. You know, really valuable. Yeah. Hundred percent, hundred percent, and and that that's pretty much what the 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 framework that we came up with really realised when we analysed that is that if you 
nail the unsexy <laughs> stuff first. Then, you know, so often it's, it's people with, um, you know, problems with reviews and our platform, which is way more easier to implement a yeah. platform um, than it is a CRM, yeah. right? But everyone starts at the CRM. Yeah, okay. But if our platform can solve, like has the, it has the coolest review, uh, automated yep. review thing, right? Re- functionality where you do bulk pings out the reviews, the client signs it on DocuSign and the system waits for it awesome. to come back and then places it in the market without anyone having to watch awesome. or maintain it, right? So that takes all this time away from the support yeah. staff that you mentioned, right? And so then you can work, if you almost work back to front and you say get that humming, then by the time you get to automating or putting this cool goals-based modeling software like that we have mm. Archer. So it's awesome for the front of house um, and power planning, but it's really cool that you can model in front of a client. But if you don't buy the time, like mm. if you if you nail your sales process, all you're going to do is put Correct. more pressure Correct. downstream on the poor which people who are implementing the software, yeah. Yeah. which will implode, right? And that's that's ultimately yeah. the insight that we glean from from this review is that there's a way to there's a way to do it, yeah. and we think we've sort of cracked that. And the interesting thing that I find, w- which we've had happen, is once we created that bandwidth at the back end, then the advisors became a bit more willing as well to go. All right, well, why don't they do some setup of the first step? So even with your modelling tools, say with Archer, okay, let mm. them get some first steps that they can just be trained to enter and do, and you know, for this type of client, put that in, and then it gets handed to the advisor to do the next step or the power planner. You know, so yeah. these the the advisors go, oh well, that person has capacity. Okay, well, I can show them how we do this step. And then, you know, the expert That's just comes it. in for the second step. Whereas when they look at them and all they're doing is, you know, the paperwork and, and submissions and all that sort of stuff, then they're never going to hand on over that stuff. You know, they're going to be fearful yeah. and it won't get done. Um, yeah. So, and then you're stuck on the same hamster wheel. Right, right? Like exactly. Nothing, nothing gets improved. Exactly. Um, so, yeah, so that's that's what we've that's what we've gleaned. Yeah. Um, but to, to circle right back to where we started, the, the, the really cool part of, um, that makes us a little bit different is – we can solve it with our assets yep. or we can solve it with someone else's and yep. we are equally happy to do that. In fact, we've got two. One of the strangest things of my business that still spins me out is that um, we get we are paid by about 300 planners to integrate the Stute Wheel with x right. So, And <laughs> this is, they use nothing, none of our tech, right. but there's like two, a whole dealer group that pays just a small fee for us, but we just handle that. that- that data handoff between the two. so Which is an interesting thought. I think that's worthwhile for the listener is that this is – there's some um, glue or gel that you guys can provide that's that connector. That's it. Um, that, yeah. And once you think that way, then you're probably more open to the other tools you have as well. It's like, oh, okay, wait a minute. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, 100%. This can get a bit easier. And I know for having, having checked things out that the other thing is because of the way either you guys have, have – either negotiated or dealt with, say, something like Xplan, then somebody could just get that one module they need or love. You know, maybe there's one thing they love about Xplan, they just want that one thing, then they can do that via, yeah. you know, raw with you guys yeah. where, they, yeah, where they'd probably struggle um, if they were going direct because there's certain things you need to add on um, in yeah. a modular basis. And, and, it's, and I, it has certainly, like I, I understand this, but because I, I ran a power planning business for seven years uh, back in the day, mm. and that just through the GFC, which was oh joy, not the best yeah. timing. <laughs> anyway, we, we got through it. But um, the the key component of that, and I think you've alluded this already, is if, because we've got the glue. Mm. You can sort of deploy piece by piece mm. and nail it right. Which means for what it also means is if the compliance person loves the X plan CRM, right. you can stay on that yep. and then use everything else that we've got. Yeah. So that's fine. Yeah. And likewise, if the para, there's a singular para planner that just loves X tools, have been using it for 25 years, they have seen no benefit in changing. Yep. That's cool too, yep. right? Like we can build around that and then still deploy, uh, deploy, you know, more apps yeah. to, to facilitate. And it's a really efficiency. important change management approach. It's probably something we don't really cover much in our industry is change management. But no. if you can ease the fear of the power planner and saying, that's no, all right, you stay where you are. We're going to yeah. do these other things. But you know what? In 12 months, yeah, Once you get used we'll to the other things, we'll run it past <laughs> yeah. you again. Let's see what you think, yeah. you know. And people's the more they need to experience new tools, the more they do get comfortable with that. 
That's just a yeah. fact. Um, we actually had, she's just recently retired, but we had a wonderful support team member who, when we, when she first joined us, she was just like, Oh my goodness, Penny, you can't be serious. Like she's of an age where, you know, even using yeah. a mobile phone was a bit, you know, originally a challenge. Whereas by the end of it, yeah. she was the one I'd first get to look at it. She got so used to, all right, so it's okay if I don't know what I'm doing. It's okay if I just try it out. It's okay if we give it a whirl and I'd send it to her to break it, you know. <laughs> See wow. how you go. Yeah, yeah. Go hard. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Tell yeah. me what doesn't work. Tell me because we would design our training based on her experience because she would be the – but they said to right-click on the cross, but it's not a cross. It's actually a down arrow or that, you know, all that stuff, right. yeah, which yeah. is that important. Detail. Yeah, for change management yeah, is. is really, really important mm. for sure. Yeah, 100%. And, and what a win, right, to be able to turn right. someone that's of an age. Yeah. You know, and, and this is this is where people get stuck and we hear it all the time where advisors are like, I badly want to change, but the just the headspace, yeah. you know, that is that that's required to do it. Yeah. They know they want to, they know they need to, but just the the fear of leaping off and can keep them stuck. Yeah, ab- absolutely. And I think that's where yeah, it is it is down to picking, you know, your first adventure. I mean, one of the things that um you might be interesting, depending on the type of clients they have. I know with dynamic docs that you guys have, which is interesting mm. to have, you know, this avatar talking somebody through their advice um, as they're going to sort of, you know, a choose your own adventure style almost to, yeah. to hold their hand. You know, this is an interesting concept, particularly, you know, what's appealing of that to me is I can be that avatar too. So it doesn't need to be a cold, mm. distant thing. I could record a whole lot of stuff that you guys could use in there that would just make them feel comfortable as they're going through it, you know, like, right. Wow. And, and it, but it, also what dawns on me is it can give your business some leverage. Yeah. Like the planning business is if yeah. you're delivering all the advice one-to-one, your growth just hits a natural seal, yeah. you know, that's not, that, that approach is not uh, as scalable yep. as a model where if you were pinging out a digital SOA, uh, and the client can read it in their own time. I'm thinking specifically around reviews, right? Yep. Because we're in this review game. Yep. And then because it's software, like it's any SOA, Dynamic Docs is, you can take any SOA and just turn it into a web browser. Yep. So it's software. So <laughs> yep. you just click your way through. But because it's software, all the graphs move. Right. Um, it can time how long the client is on each section. Right. It's got an inbuilt chat. Um all this sort of stuff. And things that you want them to confirm or, or acknowledge yeah. or, you know, all of that, yeah. like really. All that stuff. Yeah. All that. And, and what is a really good point, those hard and soft, hard and soft gates we call them. Right. And um, what that does is it gives you compliance tools. Mm. So if you go to, if you ever get in trouble and get hauled before, you know, um, fix, is it? I think it's called something else now, but. um or even um, just your compliance, your internal, yeah. Or the compliance, yeah. yeah there's a client or a client complains and say, I never understood this. And you're like, well, you spent five minutes on it, <laughs> <laughs> on that section, and you acknowledged your way through yeah. it, right, that, that, that you understood it. So you don't get that with a Word document. No. Right? So it's, it's got these compliance tools that are really slick. But to your point, the avatar, what you can basically just record yourself on your phone yeah. and then go up to YouTube or Vimeo and then you're in a box yeah. down the bottom and you can explain or be delivering 180, 180 pieces of advice all at once um, all at the same time yeah. so this is this is a scale it's all of, all of a sudden it's a real scale game and and I, I've because it's, it, it's not scale is something we talk about but I don't think people only hear Robo when they hear scale. Um, and yeah. and scale is anything that is more people than you can currently see in my view. <laughs> It's just, That's right. it's just That's- amplification. That's all it is. How do yeah. we get to more? And one of the things yeah. that um, really appealed about what you're describing is, is you know, your advisor, you send out a great review. It's fantastic. It could be written, you know, in the most easy to understand way, but there's just one thing that they've got a question about. If you design mm. that journey with the avatar well, you're preemptively handling a question. Yeah. And what's interesting about that is it's not just your own time you're saving. It's the client's time that you're respecting. Yeah. Right, because yeah. you instantly answer the question that they otherwise didn't know they would have had. You know, right. it's exactly. Yeah. It's um it's really clever. And I think it's something that we we see some of the better practice the bigger practices and um really like their eyes light up mm. because they can see that they can see that this is a way to grow more and yeah. deliver deliver 
advice more cheaply. Yep. You know, so the, you know, which is which is all advisors want to do is help people. Yeah. Right? So, um, but the cost has been so prohibitive that, um, you know, we, we've as an industry we've had to shed clients, which is just a real bummer. Yeah, it you know? is. Like the, you know, you, you know, these people need help, but we just can't see our way clear to do it. So this is a real opportunity. You like the advisors yeah. when they see this, they go, they, they they immediately feel a bit weird. That they're gonna have to <laughs> like go to camera. Yeah. Right? So that takes a bit of getting used to. They're like, oh my god, maybe we just outsource it or we get someone to do it. But <laughs> but yeah, it's a real it's a real opportunity to to add scale. And your definition is is the perfect one. Yeah, it's and I think you know that's where um, it's finding to me talking to you guys is about finding the most impactful first entry point, you know, and for some yeah, practices yeah. they might be about to go, well, either I hire a number of ex- – like we're at that tipping point where we might need to hire another advisor, which is hard right now, like it is hard mm, to have hire mm. advisors. There's less and less of us, a bit like mm. hen's teeth at the moment. Um, or could you get some bandwidth by doing something like this? Like could you do right. something such that your current advisors can actually see – you know, more people or, or at least yeah. the current ones in a more easy and less jammed in process. Yeah. Uh, because, yeah. you know, I've been um, back on the tools this year and what I've realized is, you know, it's, yes, the advice process and or the analysis or the dot preparation, that's all of that can have some work, but also it's the, the client calls in and doesn't get you. So you call them back and they don't get, you know, you don't get them. And then yeah. like, oh my <laughs> goodness, like yeah. the wasted time, you know, yeah. on both sides. So anything that can preemptively, you know, make that experience feel smoother, um, feels like we know them because we design that avatar so well, the things that it covers, the things it talks about, just we, and we do know them that well. We know what we say 400 times a, a review. You know, we know. Yeah, right? exactly. We're ready with the script. You trot that out. Best play, yeah. you know. Like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, my goodness. I mean, current markets, right, the last 12 months, I must have said what's been going on 100, no, more, more 200 times. Well, yeah. Why wouldn't we have that? You know, as just something that that can be embedded just say it once. Yeah. yeah, just say it once and embed it. Yeah, that, that's exactly it. And there was something I must dig it out, but I read somewhere and I classically forgot about what what the source is. But this sort of thing is really prominent in the states. Yep. So this is where we are quite we've fallen a fair way behind yep. in sort of sort of the tech. You know, like the the advice marketplace style thing is really prominent over there, but also this. Um, willingness to embrace, to make yourself bionic, yes. right? So w- yes. like, it's still you, but it's you in a box, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> Times 180, yeah. right? Um, and they did a study that because they rolled it out that when people were doing recordings of themselves that the clients still felt like it was the advisor yeah. talking to 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 them because they have a personal relationship that's underpinning all of yep. this. They can call them. And so it actually had no effect or a positive effect on renewal rates, right? Yep. So that people, are, I think that's a concern as well as an advisor's like, oh, well, clients, they're used to this, yep. you know. So if I implement this, how's the change management again yep. you know, going um, to going to roll out? And it's, yeah, the, if you take the lead from the States, is the clients, clients love it. Because our brain does process video as them being in front of us. We might not, right. but our brain does. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, we're yeah. just going, yeah, Feels they're personal. right here, they're talking oh, to you, you know. <laughs> I know that guy. Yeah, yeah. I know that. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, that and and there's probably an untapped sort of connection point. You know, we're not using that well enough um, because that mm. has real value. Even if it is one to one, as in you're doing it just for that client, having the recording yeah. as opposed to just doing it over a phone or a meeting means they can go back, you know, and they can revisit it yeah. and they can, you know. So there's real, yeah, it's, there's room. It's tooling. Yeah, and then just to really labour the part, the point on the advice marketplace. If you are wedded, let's just suggest you're wedded to X plan, mm-hmm. right? You can still drop this in. Right. right. This is the world we live in now. You can just drop, you can use everyone else's tech. Yeah. <laughs> and then we can drop just the, just the dynamic doc bit awesome. over what your existing thing is. So awesome. if the listener is lit up by this, but they don't want to move, you know, yep. you don't want to move, you don't, you can just make it your life better tomorrow. Right. You know, just by dropping that in. And a bit exciting. I love these things where everybody gets a bit – like there's a morale builder about some of this stuff in the team yeah, where it can just lift yeah. everybody's energy. What about, you know, what part of the full suite um, do you think just brings the client closer? I mean, actually, Dynamic Docs is probably one of them, um, but are there any other parts where you find it can really bring that connection a bit closer to the advisor? Yeah. So really I, I think about um, 
um, I think about the, the, the two areas really. Mm-hmm. So the modeling, yep. I feel like is a wasted opportunity. And one of the places where we've invested um, is to solve modeling. Yes. And as an old, as an old power planner, it's the forecast, obviously the projection yep. is so, is often the most thing that people look at, yep. right? Planners tell me that all the time, but it's static. Yes. And is, just word, and if there's anything wrong, you've got to go back and mark it up, and then go back and reproduce it, and it takes another, you know, yeah. five hours. Yeah. Um, so we've developed this thing called Archer, mm-hmm. this module called Archer, which is goals based. You drag down the strategy, and it does the maths for you. Awesome. Right. So we're living in a world where, like X plan, and and midwinter, and all of you know, uh, a lot of the incumbents sort of providers do. That, that you still, I've had to use them and go coin back in the day yeah. when I was using them, like was the, what I thought was the best at modeling trusts and stuff, but I still had to optimize. Right. right? I still had to figure out yeah. how much to put in, how much to take out yeah. to meet the expenses. Yeah. But in 2022, we can do better than that, yeah. right? We can do the maths for you. Yeah. <laughs> so we, we know the rules yeah. and we can, they don't change that regularly. Yeah. So there's no, I don't feel like there's any excuse for, well, there's no need to continue to be the optimizer. Use your brain, yeah. so we can run the maths. But because it's goals based, you can show it in the in, as software in the meeting yes. as well, and then tinker. Right. And so you tinker on the fly. Ooh, so if, if you your power this. planning tool, yeah, what if, what if, mm. right? And that's what I think brings clients in that engages them because yep. it's their life, right? Yes. Like I always, I, I it's one of my favorite rants to go on, but I hate benchmarks, yeah, right. right? I hate them because I don't think any person and, and I, we run a platform and we do reporting versus benchmark, yep. right? And I get that's useful and, but I don't believe, and this is more my opinion than Dash's opinion. So <laughs> put this in its place, but I just don't believe that people walk down the street worried about the performance of their portfolio versus a benchmark, right? right? Like they don't go, well, I lost 10%, but right. the ASX 200 lost 13. So oh, I'm woo-hoo. sweet. Like, yeah. so I'm pretty chirpy. Yeah. And likewise on the upside, yeah. but we, all people really care, and this seems to become more pronounced since COVID, is they just want to be able to live the life yeah. that they want. Yeah. And if you can funnel everything through goals, A, it's a lot less scary when markets go down. Mm-hmm. And so, that, but B, it's, it changes the conversation completely, yeah. uh, is the feedback that we get. It's all about the client. Yeah. It's not about us. And our investment philosophy yep. and this, that, and it's all important. And actions and they can one. take, which yeah, is empowering. Yeah, in actions, yeah. So, how do? We, what if I did this? Yeah. So, um, I think that's critical. And then, what I would, what I we're building, and if I can get this done, I'll leave the industry a happy man. <laughs> is to close that loop on the portal. So, right. rather than have you know the market's been incredibly volatile. We've had markets where it, days where it's dropped two percent in the morning, mm-hmm. but if someone has a portal and they look, oh, if this stayed here, my goal has dropped from 89% to 87%, yep. you know, and the long-term goals, that lens has that effect. Yep. It's much more calming. Yes. Um, so I think if, if, you, if you've got your front of house, it's a good goals-based solution and then you've got your the client has that at home as well mm-hmm. and that becomes the language in which you, what we speak yep. to clients that I think that, that is in addition to the, the dynamic docs, but digital SOA, it's just it's a different world. Yeah, you know? it is. it's a really different. It's a different language, and I think the client uh, engagement because just goes through the roof. Yeah, it does. I completely agree. And so, have you guys got? Um, and I apologise for not knowing this before I'm asking the question, but have you already got a portal in terms of you know transferring documents or anything like that as part do, of the suite? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we do. So we have one. Of, of course, we've got the platform, yep. right? So that we've even got a native app on android and yep. um and iphone so but what what we what, what we will be doing as part of this mer- the merged entity and as part of this integration effort mm. is we want the portal to be have data feeds obviously live api stuff from our platform yep. but then anything else in there plus all of the bank account debt real estate you know the whole thing yep. and then Get the whole client in, in, in the whole client view, but then layer over the goals, yeah. right? And then that's that's the client portal that I I want to live with, yep. um, rather than having multiple. You could just that whole client yeah. view uh, with the with the lens, yeah, with absolutely. The lens of the goals. It's what 
Yeah, well, it's what they want because they think about their money in a holistic, like in a one picture sense. Of course. They don't yeah. think about it as, oh, my bank money's there and my super. Like they don't think that way. My super. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> it's just their money, yeah. you know, broadly. Yeah. Um, okay. So is there any little hidden ninja things that people, you just think people probably don't take advantage of? So the users you have don't quite take advantage enough of yet that you think, oh, you know, they really need to check that out. Uh, I th- I, where, where we're seeing the, the best results, and this is going to come off completely self-serving, but <laughs> <laughs> there's one advisor who I, we just we just love here, right? And he he just lives a uh, he lives a, a great life as a soccer coach at night at a high level, and he's just one of those advisors that seems to have time, right? Right, time for us, right. time for their clients. He's rarely flustered. Yep. Uh, so I've taken him out to lunch a, a few times and what he's actually done is he's moved all his assets onto our platform yep. so he's got one platform he runs managed accounts right, right? so he under he's got an mda yep. so he does that but then he took advantage of the advice marketplace so he got that sorted right yep. so back to that advice so he got that so his back office is two two staff right, right? so he's got one, one advisor two staff and then he's got it all humming there, and then he's then added on uh, Archer for the front of house, yep. and and he's just trying Dynamic Docs, right? Yep. So piece by piece, this is over the course of of two years, right. right? So so it's been a slow burn, but it's one advisor managing 125 uh, mil across 250 clients, yeah. right? So that for me is yeah a success story from a tech perspective yeah. and just shows the value of having everything in one place yes. where, and even though he's using other apps through the advice marketplace, or he just doesn't key in the same data twice. Right. right. And the amount of times when we ask the question is how many times are you rekeying data? Like it can get up to seven. Oh, or eight. Yeah. Like if you've got, if you include platforms yes. in templates, you know, in CRMs, oh. into different, off to insurance providers and oh. in quotes, it's it's, it's crazy, yeah. yeah. And um, so I, I think rather than sort of any one feature, it's the framework, yeah. you know, like in thinking about your business holistically and committing to. I'm just going to put it in all my stuff in one place rather than having you know six platforms, yeah, and then a, t- a different tech stack. I think that's that's the real ninja. And I think you know <laughs> move, it's a, it's a great example because the other thing I'd say is somebody that. Advisors will often ask, oh, but you know, what should we be doing about this? And oh, should I start? Is I think we do need to cut ourselves some slack here. Like this stuff is change and it is distracting and absorbs time. So just start, like just start. And like you say, pick an effective point, start with that, give yourself time to embed it, give yourself time to have the the rollout and the lessons and, and see the value. And then yeah. go again. But it is know. different. But but it is a different message. So this is our challenge, right? Yeah. It's not, not advisors aren't expected to. Uh, we shouldn't expect them to understand this innately because when we were selling software to them for the last twenty years, yeah. it was like all or nothing, yeah. right? So this is a challenge. One ring right? to that rule them all. Yeah. Solve, <laughs> that you can solve a problem yeah. one piece at piecemeal, yeah. you know, and you don't have to. So that that's our challenge here at Dash yeah. is to is to really work with people within this framework and only, I think you say it, only automate awesome yeah. and get their processes right and be aware of where the process falls down. And yeah. in, uh, we need to engage support staff and make sure we understand their business before we implement. Right. And then, you know, like it's 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 a whole different, it's a whole different approach. It is. To, and to I tech. think, you know, for a business owner too, if – if you can't enunciate the 47 steps that that support person goes through to do their thing, you don't have processes yet because anybody yeah. should be able to describe it. If you know what I mean, like they should be a place where they go, oh, yep, yeah, okay, those are the things they do. Now, they can be better at it. They can be really comfortable with it and, and effective and know their stuff really well, but you should be able to describe it. Whereas I think because we are so advisor focused, uh, then mm. we can do that for the advisor but probably yeah. not for the rest of the team, you know, and, and we yeah. need to be able to do – just to run a business, you need to be able to do that. You need to understand the experience yeah. of each of your team members for sure. Well, and the, the the last point on that is it's just worth – it's worth doing before approaching any yeah. tech provider um, <laughs> yeah. because of the reasons we've we've covered. But 
also processes, they'll surprise you. Yeah. Like they're a moving piece, yeah. you know, like you think you knew it two years ago and then you go, oh, no. hold on. <laughs> the, yeah, the, the, the things have changed. <laughs> and so it's worth it's worth a recap before engaging yeah. with us or, or with it. Yeah, definitely. One of the things before we wrap up, I am curious about, you've sort of talked about where you guys specifically are some next things on the horizon. Is there any unicorn things a bit further out that you'd love to see happen or you'd love to – to, you know, be a part of down the track? Is there anything really, you know, gee, it'd be wonderful if? Oh, that's a really good question. <laughs> I would love, <laughs> it would be wonderful. There will be a time in place where every piece of tech in the market, and this is a very sort of tech shop orientated, but where every piece of tech in the market has the ability to plug in like yes. Lego, right? So <laughs> not only do they have... The tech, like they're, they're built post 2010. Yeah. Right? Like which, which was 12 years ago. Yeah. Right. So this is, this is a surprising conversation to be having. Yeah. You know, we're still, we're like the market, our, our, the financial planning market is dominating by software that's more than 20 years yeah. old. Right. So I think 68% of the platforms are, uh, of money is still on platforms that have been, been around since the early 2000s. Yeah. Um, so if you have tech like that, you, your options are limited. But there, if you go to the States, so much new tech is being built all the time mm-hmm. and they are being built with the view to, yeah, to integrate yeah. and to integrate nice, play nicely. Yeah. So there's a willingness and a philosophy there. And then there's the, the actual tech chops to do it. Yeah. Um, so, so then you advisors can, in that world, they can be build a tech stack that's completely custom, but with none of the, none of the, um, the drawbacks right. of, of having to forego data, yep. you know, integrity and privacy and all yep. of that sort of stuff. Yep. Like it can all be uh, – so you get all the all the good stuff without any of the, yeah. the harmful nasties where data just goes missing, you know. So, Absolutely. Uh, that would be – that would be a hell of a place to live. It would be and it's something that – I mean, I'm with you there because it's frustrated me when you, when you go in into entrepreneur world, right? So you're outside of advice and you're in, you know, coaches or, or trainers or podcasters or any of the other world, then any new app in that world must integrate. Like it, people won't use yeah. it if it doesn't. Like they yeah, just won't. That's right. Like it's a, no, yeah. sorry. <laughs> Not in. Yeah, no, sorry. You know, what's, what's the point of it? Right, you? it's yeah, a bare minimum. Yeah. And so, you know, I'm with you. I'd love to be at that point because it also, there will be loads and loads of comp- combos of two things that will have more impact than the sum of their parts. You know, like it'll, the people will combine yeah. two things and you're like, oh my goodness, that is yeah. magic, you know? And, yeah. and because tech providers, even like yourselves, will be willing to do that, then those com- there'll be more and more of those magical combos. You know, there'll be more and more yeah. because you're being open about it. You're being, yes, we want to collaborate. Yes, we want to integrate, you know? Um, it's less defensive and protective. Um which, yeah, I think that'll be really exciting, you know, and then it's down to yeah. the individual's creativity, really. Like, yeah. Go nuts. Yeah, it's you know? your imagination. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Is there anything we've missed? Probably. But is there anything particularly <sighs> we've missed? Oh, look, not really. Um, I, I just um, no, I really enjoy the chat. Thank you, Peter. No, I've, um, I've been, it's been fun <laughs> and uh, I think we've got – We've covered a lot we in a shorter given period, a period of, time. of time. Exactly. I mean, we could have the yeah. six-hour episode, but I think that's a bit rough. That's yeah. a lot to expect yeah. to people. Um, yeah. All right, Advice Explorers, if you'd like to find out more about, you know, the Dash suite of tools, then the website link is in the episode show notes along with Andrew's LinkedIn details. So he'll, you know, poke him on LinkedIn and then he'll point you in the right direction of a member of the team that can look after you, I'm sure. Thank you for joining us, um, Andrew. Thank you. It's really great you know, to see advisors and advice practices just having options, you know, to feel a bit more freedom. Um, and so, you know, I'm really excited to see the future permutations um, of how you guys can sort of bring different tech together to support their client experience. So, are you a current user of Dash or of Archer or of Dynamic Docs or <laughs> – well, they do any of the any of the tools we were talking about. Um, you know, maybe you agree or disagree uh, with our discussion of all of those tools. Please share insights on the XY community platform. Um, in fact, I referred to the platform to to make sure I drew out some of the things you guys have been discussing. You know, it's great when we share these things, and 
really give our experience and insight to, you know, other practices and other advisors that are looking at these tools. So please, I'd encourage you to go and do that. And as for my thoughts from that, I think, you know, there's sort of two key things I'd say. One, the magic and having implemented a lot of tech in our business over the years, the magic of having this suite of opportunities to choose from is you can just solve your most immediate problem first. You know, maybe you want to upgrade your CRM or maybe you want more out of a modeling tool or maybe document generation is just driving you nuts. Whatever it is, that's that one thing that you feel will have the most impact for you, but also for your team, right? No matter what it is, you can just engage on that front first, you know, then over time, you can just gradually pick your next challenge and compare what tools are available in something like, say, the Dash sort of marketplace or their suite of tools against what you're currently using and just keep on on this compare game, right? And then, all right, what what other one am I going to plug in and change, right? So it lets you do this piecemeal. Um, It doesn't need to be an all or nothing exercise. And, you know, aside from ensuring you get the right tool for the job, which isn't easy and requires some energy, what this means is you aren't trying to implement a complete end-to-end solution in one hit, right? We've probably all as consumers experienced when a provider does this, you know, when maybe a tech, uh, sorry, a, a telecoms provider does, or or even when a platform does, you know, and they upgrade your tech and then it just all hell breaks loose, right? It just invariably does. This is when we do this on this full end-to-end replacement. It's just a surefire way to make you age prematurely. Honestly, it is hard and it is torturous. You know, piecemeal at a time will let you and your team absorb and adjust to the new technology and really ensure that you embed the value, you embed the improvement before you take the next step. Um, You know, the other part I'd say that I'd reiterate, um, and Andrew sort of enunciated this as well, is take the time to deeply understand every process in your practice every experience a client goes through. What's the process when they come into the office? What's the process? Right. Understand all of those. Just document them all, even if it's boxes and arrows, because that com- you know, conversation you'll have with your team to do that can just highlight these disastrous, repetitive, manual, difficult, complicated, torturous things. Um, I remember one session I ended up doing with a practice where the single most frustrating thing for the team as a whole, but primarily the admin team, was the scanner they used was so slow, one of the team was standing up at the scanner for about half their day. Right now, these things once resolved, which was just upgrade to a decent scanner, which isn't a huge outlay, um, unlocked hours and hours a day. Right. So it doesn't need to be this sexy front end advisor analysis or, or, or wonderful things. It can be this back end stuff that can really transform not just the practice, but the morale of the team. Right. <laughs> let's all have happy staff. You know, let's, let's fix those things that frustrate them. Now, As you know, only one skill we need to become bionic advisors, that's avid curiosity. And I'm hoping we're a little ways into this process here. We're a few episodes in, so hopefully you're starting to build that curiosity muscle. Um, But to help you build a habit, today's Curiosity Corner app that caught my eye is Airgram. Now, you can find it at airgram.io. Now, this is interesting. This, you know, their tagline says, focus on your meetings, not your notes. And basically, it's four internal and client meetings, virtual ones, ideally, you know, uh, video ones, and it automates joining, recording, and note-taking with some sort of clever AI, right? So for me, what's interesting about this is you could be having a video meeting. It could be in Zoom. It could be in Google Meet. It could be in Teams. They're indifferent to that. And you turn on Airgram to record it and transcribe the discussion in real time. So it's doing that in front of you. But also you can set an agenda that then you can step through and you could make separate notes as you go, right? You can then download the recording to save against your client's file. But I just like this dynamic transcription. You can interact on it, amend it as you go. Basically, you can be focusing on the conversation 
while the recording re- record keeping thing happens aside. Now, it's really important when you're using tools like this to run it past compliance. So I'd encourage you to do that, but you can test it for free and get five recordings to just give it a try. So, you know, you may even find that it's useful for team meetings to have notes taken uh, as you go, have an agenda, get some structure. So I'd encourage you to check it out and let me know if you like it or not. Either way, welp. That's all we've got for this week. Be sure to subscribe to the podcast so you'll get your advice tech fix automatically sent to you each Friday. And I just want to take a moment to welcome you back from the end of your break. I hope you and your loved ones had a safe and really relaxing time together and you're ready to leap into 2023 as only advice explorers can. Now, with that in mind, Jenny Pierce and I have a couple of spots available for our Niche Down and Scale Up workshop in February. This is sort of about narrowing down who you focus on and who you're going to be really trying to attract in 2023 for your new business and then tailoring your systems and processes to optimize their experience and make life easier for you while you're at it. So the first session in February is in Sydney. However, we've actually had loads of interest all over the countryside. So if you are keen, then please reach out um, on LinkedIn forward slash Peter MD. That's P-E-I-T-A-M-D. As all we need is about sort of 10 people in a regional area and we'll absolutely run the workshop there too. Otherwise, I'll look forward to turning up in your earbuds next week. And remember, advice explorers, stay curious. (laughs) 